One week out from a juvenile crime meeting in Annapolis, state lawmakers are facing mounting pressure to address the youth crime crisis. And tonight, Fox 45 News is demanding answers from lawmakers and the governor on how they plan to get the problem under control. There is nothing that we will not uh, that we will not contemplate, and there is nobody who we will not work with to be able to make sure that we're keeping our community safe. We have to hold the governor's feet to the fire. He's a nice guy, but he's he's a little bit out to pasture on this issue. In Baltimore alone, police arrested 15 young people over the holiday weekend. The crimes range from armed robberies to carjackings and assaults, spanning nearly half of BPD's nine districts. Juvenile arrests are up nearly 30 percent this year in the city. One mother who's all too familiar with Baltimore's violence demanding some action from lawmakers. Crystal Gonzalez lost her daughter Aaliyah during the Brooklyn Day mass shooting this year. And now she's sharing her frustration with the juvenile justice laws in place. Tonight, we have team coverage on the juvenile crime crisis, beginning with Keith Daniels and this mother's message. Keith. Well, Kai and Mary, for Crystal Gonzalez, the current laws involving juvenile offenders are weak at best, simply not working at worst. And tonight, she's calling for change. Crystal Gonzalez, mother of the 18-year-old girl killed in the Brooklyn Day mass shooting, escalating her public plight. Our laws dictate the state of our culture. Gonzalez is using social media now in her fight for Maryland state lawmakers to stiffen laws involving juvenile offenders behind the calming music. So what is written into law and her gentle delivery. I got something to share in my walk. The alarming call heard in her most recent post for lawmakers to act now. The current state of our juvenile crime laws are showing that our juveniles are actually obeying the laws. Our young offenders understand that if they stay under the law, they cannot be held accountable because of their ages. Someone shot and killed Gonzalez's daughter, Aaliyah, at the Brooklyn Day event in July. 20-year-old Kylis Van Beamy also killed, with 28 others shot but survived. There were arrests, though no one has been directly charged with the killings. Those in custody, three of the five suspects were juvenile offenders. Three of the five suspects had ankle monitors. I, mean, I know the responsibility for public safety rests professionally um, on you. Tonight at a public safety town hall meeting. I'm first and foremost grateful that she's had the courage to step forward and to share her perspective. We caught up with Delegate Kaylin Young, a member of the Baltimore City delegation in Annapolis, pressed him about Gonzalez's claim that lawmakers are, quote, out of touch with the current juvenile crisis. I think that we're going to be evaluating each and every law that comes forth uh, before us to see what makes the most sense. I think there's a balance that we need to strike. Certainly we need to make sure that there's accountability, but we also need to make sure uh, that we're not going backwards into things that uh, had a negative impact on uh, our city. Gonzalez calls her fight personal. We need the people who are responsible for these laws to take action. I don't want to challenge what she said, and in fact I understand how very personal this is for her. But I also want to emphasize that this is personal for everybody. We all live in Baltimore City. We all deal with the impact of gun violence, of carjackings, of the negative public safety uh, that we have. We also understand that there has been some progress that we want to build on. We Well, Gonzalez also pointing out recent comments made by State Senator William Smith out of Montgomery County, who said recently we need more time to see the fruit of the current laws. Gonzalez believes, quote, we don't have more time. We're live tonight. Keith Daniels, Fox 45 News. Keith, thank you. And as Keith mentioned, we spoke with Delegate Young during a public safety town hall this evening. Members of the Baltimore City delegation, along with the Baltimore City Police Commissioner and Baltimore County's police chief, heard from residents who were fed up with juvenile crime. They did find a 16 and a 15 year old. The one pistol whipped me, and that's why my face looks the way it does and my head is the way it does. Something needs to be done. If we can't hold the parents responsible, then the system needs to hold the juveniles responsible. I don't want to hear apologies. Um, I want to hear what we're going to be doing for the kids. And the reason that I say that, I've worked with troubled kids for a really long time. 
I've never in my life seen what I'm seeing now. There's a child two doors down who is well known for carjacking. And it's a catch and release program, catch and release. And I understand the policy behind it. I understand the reasoning behind it. She is in the custody of her grandmother. Her grandmother works two jobs to support the family. She's not able to supervise her. So during the catch and release and the catch and release, there are cars being stolen. There are people getting beat up. Powerful words from that gentleman. Uh, the lawmakers responding to those people with sympathy, but not necessarily outlining specifically how they plan to handle the juvenile crime crisis when the session starts in January. The delegates in attendance spent most of their time listening rather than speaking. Baltimore County State's Attorney Scott Schellenberger made his stance on the issue clear. Folks in Annapolis for the last couple of years have been trying to change the laws to not let uh, the police in my office charge 15 and 16 year olds as adults if they have a bad background. And I'd like to reinforce the fact that I'm going to continue to fight that uh, because I believe when a 16 year old uh, hits somebody with a gun, uh, they need to be treated like an adult. I want to know what are you guys going to do, Commissioner Worley? What are you going to do when you arrest these perps? What happens in the, in the system, and it depends on the age of the individual, if they're under the age of 18, we arrest them, or take, they're taken to juvenile booking, and what happens there is the Department of Juvenile Services looks at the arrest and looks at their record and decides if they're going to detain them or release them to their parents. At a separate hearing tonight, another group of Baltimore City delegation members heard from city leaders and the public about what they want to see happen in the next legislative session. Mayor Scott did mention getting juvenile crime under control as a priority, but he didn't give many specifics. Working with our partners in the state to build and fix systems around juvenile justice, understanding as always that you cannot treat a 12-year-old the same way you treat a 30-year-old person. That's just not the way their brain works. But we have to build systems and make sure that there's accountability. Well, that is in contrast with Baltimore City State's Attorney Ivan Bates, who called out Maryland's juvenile crime laws by name, listing out exactly what he wants to see changed. When a juvenile is charged with an illegal handgun or a juvenile is charged with uh, an offense involving an automobile, I would like to now tweak the law just a, a little bit from having that case go straight to DJS because they're misdemeanors, but in fact, maybe having that matter go before a judicial magistrate. Right now, the Juvenile Interrogation Act, the officer would call a public defender hotline. That public defender hotline, that public defender would not be there, would basically state yes or no as to whether or not you could talk to the child. I think that's patently unfair. So what I would ask is that we have changed the law and amended to not have a hotline but to have a lawyer sitting right next to that child. Well, earlier this month, state Republicans unveiled a five-part proposal to address crime, including the Juvenile Justice Restoration Act. One idea is to allow parents to substitute for an attorney if their child faces questions from police. It would also force anyone under 13 charged with a gun crime or any child arrested for the same nonviolent crime three times to automatically go into DJS supervision. But the plan doesn't address problems that we've seen with some detention once a child leaves DJS. Fox 45 press lawmakers on that, leaving one delegate without an answer. Not in this particular proposal, no. So just so I'm clear, you're referring more children to DJS but not providing funding or programming to help DJS supervise them? Those kids need more than what the children and child in need of assistance or child in need of supervision system can provide them. Uh, and so I think resources have been cut. Uh, that's a budgetary issue. Uh, as you know, you know, we'll see what Governor Moore's budget says. Republicans say they're optimistic about the crime bills, but in order for them to pass, they would need to win Democratic support. Governor Westmore says he's working on a juvenile crime plan, but he hasn't revealed specifics at this time. Fox 45's Mackenzie Frost pressed the governor for an update on his plan this afternoon. Governor Westmore continues to make broad statements about his ideas to address juvenile crime, but has yet to talk about specifics. And now some lawmakers are saying the governor is out of touch when it comes to the juvenile crime crisis. 
In six weeks, Annapolis will be swarmed with lawmakers as the 90-day legislative session gets underway. But right now, the work is slow. Thank you all for uh, for joining us today. Governor Wes Moore facing questions about dozens of kids getting arrested over the weekend. Eastern Patterson, possible armed robbery. On November 26th, Baltimore police say seven juveniles were arrested for auto theft. For people who violate the law, uh, regardless of age, there needs to be accountability measures. The governor echoing what he said in the past, but not saying yes or no when asked if he will declare a public emergency due to juvenile crime like Mayor Muriel Bowser did in Washington, D.C. I think people understand how seriously we take this, and I think people understand that there is nothing that we will not uh, that we will not contemplate, and there is nobody who we will not work with to be able to make sure that we're keeping our community safe. But right now, it's unclear how he wants to get it done. This is not a new issue. Delegate Robin Grammer, a Republican from Baltimore County, growing frustrated with the juvenile justice system and the apparent slow action from the governor. It's pretty clear that he doesn't even know what's going on. We have to hold. The governor's feet to the fire. He's a nice guy, but he's he's a little bit out to pasture on this issue. We pressed Governor Moore on getting details. I know you've said in the past that you will unveil your own juvenile crime plan. Where do we stand on that? Well, I think what people know is that we've been working with individuals all across the aisle to be able to address this problem. We, we're, we're very clear on, on the challenges uh, that DJS has had and that have been longstanding. Uh, we're clear that when we came into office, we walked into uh, a, a DJS that was understaffed and underfunded. And it's the reason why I appointed a true reformer. But do you, have a, do you have a timeline for when the public will see your vision for this moving forward, leading on this issue before January 10th? Oh yeah, the, the, the public will, will see our complete rollout prior to the legislative session. When? And we're working in partnership with, uh, with both Democratic and Republican leaders uh, to be able to ensure that the basic principles that we have laid out before, how do you increase accountability? How are we making sure that we're addressing the issue of illegal guns and, the, and, and how easy it is to gain access to illegal guns? And also I know the legislature is working on tweaks and reforms to laws that were passed before I became the governor that we want to see and we anticipate seeing. No direct answer from the governor about releasing details for his plan. Meanwhile, lawmakers continue to debate the issue and kids continue to cycle through the juvenile justice system without a clear plan yet on how to fix the problem. The governor also talks about providing more resources to the Department of Juvenile Services, but again, he's short on details. In the newsroom, Mackenzie Frost, Fox 45 News. And while there is a juvenile crime meeting next Tuesday, lawmakers won't be able to change any laws until the session begins in January. Police and prosecutors across the state tell Fox 45 News lawmakers can't wait that long to take action. If you don't work on this immediately and you say we're going to look at it in January and we're going to ask the governor to sign it in April, May or June and it's effective in July or maybe October, the wake of victims is going to be tremendous. We have also heard from frustrated parents calling for their own children to face consequences for their actions. The mother of a teen released by police after an assault and attempted car theft caught on camera says it is hard for her to hold her son accountable if the justice system won't penalize him. I had no awareness that he was doing all these these types of activities. I mean, something's got to give because, like, like I said, the way he going, he's he not, he not going to be here. The way he keep going, he needs more discipline, more structure. And that brings us to our question of the day. Do you trust the governor to handle the juvenile crime crisis? 96% of those who voted say yes. Make your voice heard by going to foxbaltimore.com vote.